Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today what we're going to talk about is uh, a Google My Business tutorial. And without putting any frills on it, I'm going to keep this real simple. Uh, it's probably going to be a 10 to 15 minute video. And I'm going to show all of you the top five things that I do that nobody else is doing to rank people for hyperlocal. I'm just going to give you my top five tips, tricks, and hacks. And uh, for those of you that have been following me for a while, my name is Robert Newman. I'm uh, the founder of Inbound REM. I'm a real estate SEO specialist, and I have been for 16 years, which easily makes me one of the most experienced real estate SEO exper uh, uh, experts in the country, if not the top guy. Um, all right. So without any further ado, we are going to spend the first couple of recommendations, just you and me. Please go to your desk, grab your pen, piece of paper. If you're not going to do that, then you're going to want to like or subscribe to my channel or this save this video. All right, here we go. Number one, video is a ranking factor for hyperlocal. It's not very well known. Google is basically using a user profile mechanism where they're looking at you as the individual and they're tracking all of your behavior on Google. Now, how do they track it? That leads to hack number two, your email address, which needs to be a Gmail address and it needs to be the same Gmail address across all your profiles. You absolutely can have different email addresses. I get asked about this all the time. It has not been some kind of published guaranteed thing that says that you can't use different emails on different platforms. But what I've noticed after 15 years of doing this and the last 10 spent optimizing clients' real estate Google profiles is that the ones that are using two or three different types of email addresses because they're not putting together in their brain that their Google business profile, their YouTube channel, their Gmail account, for Google, they're all the same. You are one user. So when you're creating a, using a Yahoo account to open up a YouTube channel, but you start linking it to your website and you're thinking that Google somehow knows that these things are connected. Well, they don't necessarily, and you want them to, and I'm gonna explain why. Video has metadata in it, as do images. The hack is the same for both images and videos. So this is three and one is what I'm explaining to you now. This is hack number one, two, and three. And it all connects into local user data that data that you're transmitting to Google, which most people, I think, theoretically understand that they do, but you probably don't intuitively understand what they're using that local data for. So if you're creating a video and you're driving around, Google is going to be able to see the latitude and longitude of your entire drive down to the last inch, right? So if you create a video, let's say I'm living in Van Nuys and I create a video and I call it uh, Van Nuys Neighborhood Tour, Van Nuys Home Tour, something like that. And then I drive around my car and then I upload the video to YouTube. Google is able to verify that you were literally in the place that you said you were filming the, the video. That's a massive hyperlocal signal because hyperlocal is about local. It's about expertise, authority, and trust for you as a professional working in a very specific area. That's the whole point of Google Maps and Hyperlocal is to identify where you are and how good you are at communicating data about that area and about your profession to the audience at large. So having a video with a location tag is a massive factor in whether or not you rank. One of the secrets of the, all of this is people go, oh, I do that all the time, video this, video that, but I'm not getting ranking on Hyperlocal. It's like, well, my very first question is, did you connect your Hyperlocal profile using the same Gmail account that you opened up your YouTube channel under. While Google can and will rank both profiles, they'll rank them independently. Now, if you're doing work on both your local profile and your YouTube channel, and you also happen to own a website and you're posting images to it, guess what? That's three sets of signals under one Google account, and you've just given yourself a 300% chance of ranking because this isn't super complicated. The complicated part is understanding the way that the technology works and connects into each other. And I'm explaining that to you right now. That's the complicated part. The easy part is actually just going, okay, I'm gonna use one email address. Now that I understand that my videos in, in, and images and uh, the stuff that I do on my website is all connected, I'm gonna make sure that Google can read 
that connective signal. In other words, they, you just want to make sure, number one, you don't want to use a professional videographer that strips out metadata. You've got, it, unless of course you're doing a branding effort. If you're doing a branding effort, you strip out the metadata. If you're not doing a branding effort, you, 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 sit, you use devices like this one. Google has made this so easy and realtors tend to want to complicate it. They, they have already said, listen, we're going to do 520 lines of metadata in your phone. That, that metadata is just to let us know where the content is created. It's not malicious. It's like, where is it created? Um, what device are you using? Just uh, various details, which are very important for Google to be able to categorize the content because historically people who use the web do not help Google at all. So now they've moved into devices and device manufacturers so that they will help them categorize information that's being put up on the web so that the search engine can read it automatically. And by the way, connect it to your user profile because you do have one. And then Google is now measuring how long people look at those images, how long people look at your videos, how long... Um, and they're equating and connecting it into your account. Now it's a massive expertise and authority quality signal. If people spend a hundred hours reviewing your neighborhood tours, that plays directly into your hyperlocal ranking. As a matter of fact, somebody can actually skip reviews and other things if they were doing all these other signals very, very well. But the hack, the hack is what I'm telling you. You can go and look at some videos and find some tutorials on how to set up your profile. I have a few of those up. I'm giving you the five hacks that nobody's paying any attention to, including my competitors. Why? It's hard to manage this process as a marketing company. I've got to assign somebody to you. I've got to make sure that you're using the same email address. I got to make sure that, we are, that you are not as a real estate agent doing what you're inclined to do, which is probably hire a professional videographer who, and they are very specifically focused on one thing, image quality, which oftentimes means they strip out extraneous data bits because HD images already take up a lot of memory. So they're not using metadata, which means that for ranking purposes, we would have to add that those signals back into the images and the video. And very few of you have the budget or the time to hire a company like ours to go do that kind of granular work on everything that you're producing. Much better just to get into the habit, if you are a luxury agent, you're trying to figure out your strategy, here's the hack. You drive around the neighborhood using your cell phone. You don't do your listing videos. You don't do any of the high quality stuff using this. You then upload your listing videos and the things that your clients expect that you're already spending two or three grand on. And you upload those using your videographer. You never, ever, 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 ever let anybody touch your hyper-local content that you're producing for lead generation except for people like me who are optimizing it. Why? Because 99% of the time they're going to mess it up. That's why when I go into and I look at other people's hyperlocal profiles, guys, these five hacks rank me every single time in every single market, no matter what the competition is. I'm giving them to you right now, these five things. So I've covered three. Just for those of you who are trying to track along, it's video filmed with a, a camera. So video is a hack. Make, making sure that you establish your YouTube channel with the email account, which is a second hack, making sure that your same email is on every single channel. Okay, and then images, same thing. You can upload them directly to Google business profile. As long as you took them with your phone, that would be best because of the location tag on the image, which allows Google to verify that the image was taken by you in these neighborhoods. Part of your metadata locks in the device to the device holder's name. In other words, Google is looking to verify that you are legitimately the person making the videos, making the recordings. So much of ranking, so much of influencer kind of work is who can verify who you are. Like, because I know we all want to cut corners, let AI do the work, let our assistant be the brand ambassador for the business. The list goes on and on, right? The truth is Google knows that too. And the simple fact is they're going to reward people that get behind their brand personally because that is really mostly what people want to see and relate to. It's just a fact. Okay, so they're giving you massive extra credit if you verify. Like three, four hundred percent more. A, a staggering amount more. These hacks are incredibly potent if you use them. Um, reviews. 
Now I've got, I've written a massive blog post on reviews. Okay. I'm going to show all of you some of my own reviews, share my screen. Okay. We're going to go to uh, inbound REM. This isn't as clean of a hack. I've written whole blog posts on this because one of the things that will, like really this hack is actually the fact that uh, user engagement is a major ranking factor on Google business profiles, user engagement. That is, so what's user engagement? User engagement is where I come in here and I, this is a very light form of engagement, what you're, what you're watching, but it is engagement. I've got this open. Google can see that. They can see, I don't know if you can see it up here, but they know that I'm spending time on this specific page. This is my latitude. This is my longitude. This is the name of the business as I have it listed um, for my Google business profile. All right. So now these snippets are probably the first thing that people engage with. But what people really engage with always is going to be the in-depth reviews. If they're going to do anything at all, they're going to come in here. Now, what you just watched me do is a major engagement signal. I don't know if you saw me, but I went in here and there's, there's these more buttons. Do you see them? So when I clicked on reviews, when I clicked on more, these are signals that Google collects, data that is very hard to trick out or fake out, which is user engagement signals is what they would be referred to. And these user engagement signals, which also could include sharing the review, things like that, these are extremely important signals for Google because they tell them that at a minimum, your audience is really engaged with your profile, probably reviewing either what, what other people are saying about with you about the reviews. Google, I don't think necessarily separates out whether or not you're reading about the business or you're reading the reviews. I think that you, they, they may very well just put it into the bucket of, well, if you're engaged and you're you're clicking on buttons, then you must, they must really have a lot to say. And they could very well be collecting a couple of other data points, such as if you have a phone number, does anybody call you? Does anybody click the directions buttons? Now that is what they are tracking in the, in the search, in the, uh, in their platform. And usually they're very transparent. Usually they say, these are the things that we're tracking about, tracking on. Okay, so if we're tracking on this, um, if we're tracking on it, then uh, most likely it's relevant to ranking. In other words, if we're looking at it, you should be looking at it too. S simplest way I can put it. The easiest way for you as a human being to, or a business owner, a real estate agent, a realtor to, to create a really effective user engagement strategy with your hyperlocal profile is to make sure that your reviews are deep and detailed. Okay. Now all of this is stuff that you've heard before. I'm going to guess. All right. You've probably heard this many times. This isn't the hack though. Okay. Getting reviews. I want you to look at my reviews. Okay. Now please go ahead and look and, and make sure that you understand what keywords should be in here. I mean, I have a super incredibly dominant profile. Okay. Massively dominant profile. And I have a dominantly ranking profile. Um, I'm going to pause recording for one second. Just so. Okay. This is inbound REM's profile. We don't get most of our business locally. We get it mostly nationally. So this is not uh, like, this is just for me to show you what I'm talking about. Like when you start saying what does a local profile do? Number one, the trackability is beautiful. This is a simple tool to use from an analytics standpoint. Anybody can do it. Bookings, which is connected into the calendar. Is anybody doing that? People are not on my profile. They are, however, making calls off my profile. And I can verify that. I get uh, real estate deals and things like that. I get some salespeople calling me. All of that comes in off my profile. Uh, website clicks, I get 170 visits since, since September. So Hyperlocal is delivering some, some visits to me. This was a solicitation, all of that stuff, right? 
But here's the interesting thing. This is, whoop, not, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, Um, all right. I'm just going to try to keep this trucking along here, but there's a curiosity here. I was looking for the keywords. I'm not finding it. All right. Now we got this. Anyway. All right. Here's the hack. All right. Here's hack number four. Okay. And I started off with the three easiest hacks. So if you're just, just skip forward to this, this part of the video, skip back. All right. The one way, the easy way, the most useful thing about a CRM, for the most part, I'm not actually, for a guy that's been in teleservices who understands customer record management systems better than most people that any of you will ever uh, hear from or see, I got to tell you, there is a more and more limited value for a single platform experience for some type of realtor. Usually they're given to brand new salespeople who are having a hard time doing the basics, such as tracking your customer recommended data management. Most pro salespeople um, are going to have data in five or six different places and mostly be operating off their phone. Now, there is a couple of exceptions that I find CRMs really, really useful for. I find CRMs really useful for chained communication that you know you need to send out that you can do so at a click of a button. And one of the things that I do is I, I'm using a very advanced CRM called HubSpot. And um, for the most part, I use it at, a, I'm not using a lot of the automation. I'm not using a whole, like sequences and workflows. I have a minimal amount of those. I have a minimal amount of dashboards. Um, and I understand how all these things work. I'm not using payments out of here. I am occasionally using playbooks, but here's the really, really uh, important thing uh, it's conversations okay sorry when we come in here you'll discover that i have got a um an email a template email that i send out to my clients and this is the hack okay um this is the most important template that I've created for the company. Um, in terms of results, marketing results, this is it. Every time I get on the phone with somebody, whether it's a consultation, answering some questions, whether somebody cold calls me because they think I'm a real estate agent and they're trying to sell me a service, I talk to everybody. Why do I talk to everybody? Because every single person is an opportunity for you to build your reputation. Okay. And there's a lot of things that go into these reviews. Um, like one of those things is not being able to understand in advance what level of reviewer somebody might be. Because a single review might very well propel your whole profile. Because like everything else, Google is ranking the credibility of the reviewers and then letting them send a signal for how strong the quality of the review is. So in other words, if they know for sure that I've written 100 reviews that have had 200,000 views and I leave a review for you and it's good and it's high quality and it seems to relate directly into your profile, well, then they count that as a massive reputation push up for your own profile. That is why even though I did my review for Brett four years ago, it is the number one review on his, his profile out of 105. You never know who's going to get your review or what the quality of that review is going to be. You could very well be talking to a student who is interviewing with you as an intern, and that young man or woman could very well uh, be a, like a really high quality proficient reviewer. And they may like, and at the end of that conversation, what you would do is you would, you would use this template and say, hey, I really appreciate the time that we spent together today. I encourage you to use me as a resource for any questions you have as you search for your job as an intern here in Austin, Texas. I'll do my best to address these questions by, by email or text. I'm going to ask you a favor, though. The whole world has gone online and reviews and testimonials in the right places are more important than ever. 
if you would be willing to take five minutes and rate your satisfaction with my interaction, our interactions, I'd be forever grateful. I need some reviews on my Google business profile. Here's the link. Here's a rough outline of the categories I'm hoping you'll cover. What you say or how you say it, feel about the quality of my consultation, the quality of the interview is, of course, up to you. We did an online consultation. Did you learn anything? Would you recommend other real estate agents take advantage of an online consultation with me? Was there anything about the presentation that stood out for you? Last but not least, Robert gave me some excellent advice in owning my website and real estate lead generation. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I specifically say in my, my copy, don't copy what I said, but you know, most people do. And that's a reality. And there's some, in this one particular case, laziness is usually a super high degree of frustrating for us as internet marketers, but not now, not here. If you write a lot of, like if you really recap the experience that you had with that intern, like we spent an hour talking to each other and we talked very specifically about your duties, social media, um, taking calls, uh, running open houses. These were all the things that we discussed. And I'm hoping that, you know, and I'm hoping that you learned a lot in the interview process about what a real estate assistant's job would be. Now they mostly probably say copy that. And now you have all those keywords, every single one of those skills and experience are now locked into your review, not to mention you have the added advantage that the reviews are deep and then you respond in a really compelling and deep way. And between those two things, all this strategy locked in together, it gives you almost a juggernaut of ability to rank for local. If you were doing all four of the things that I just mentioned, you have a staggering advantage over other real estate agents. Here's the final thing. All right, I've given you four tips and tricks that most people could do. A little bit of work, a little bit of discipline. Now the fifth one, the fifth hack is a big one. And it's not one that you can do just because or anywhere. It's very high, um, high degree of expertise. All right. Um, but I'd be remiss not to mention it because it is one of the reasons why, like if you have a website, if you have a, a web presence um, and you have the ability to make a tool like this work in a very specific environment, then this right here is the fifth and probably one of the biggest hacks and certainly one of the reasons why we are untouchable as a marketing company in the hyper-local space um, because this right here that you're seeing is a plugin. You're looking at a custom map that I built on Google Maps and it was used, usually built using, um, it's, it's most of the time built using our marketing account put onto your site, which means that it's a 50-50 kind of signal. If we ever had clients that were organized enough to let us use their own email address, give us access to it, and we built it using their name, then it would be a 10 of 10 marketing signal for local. Right now it's a five of 10. It's still a hack that only we're doing though. All right, that, that marketing signal, do you see this where it says 3,048 views? Probably seems pretty cool. A lot of them coming in from the site you can see here, but I'm gonna show you something that's gonna blow your mind. When I click on this right here, do you see where it says details? I want you to notice something. Bang, the URL switches, and then it switches again. From the client perspective, you just went to the page, this page, but that's not what happened. We bounced onto hyperlocal to a hyperlocal map, and then we bounced onto the website. Google believes that people traveled from the map to the site. 3,048 people have used this hyperlocal map. You can see how custom it is. Custom borders, truly approved by the client, walk through hand by hand with them. This is called a Google Maps signal. When you create something using Google tools, they can see all the interactions. They can see that those interactions are directed back to Brett. Even at the five of 10 that I mentioned to you, since I'm not sure whether we used his email or ours, there is still no doubt in Google's brain that his website is being used as the absolute resource for this local information, which means for hyper-local, drum roll please, Brett has twice moved and we have always had him like just incredibly dominant in local. Every time you move, we got to start over again. He didn't realize that a move half a mile down the street was going to tank all of his local rankings because that's exactly what it did. 
So what you're looking at is you're looking at all of us regaining this ranking over the last six months to a year, but it's pretty, it's pretty guaranteed that he's going to end up once again, which he already is in many cases, being the number one guy for Fort Bend Realtor, Fort Bend Realtors, Fort Bend, Texas Realtor. And you can see here the rank, the local finder, number one, number two, this organic and organic mobile are the traditional search results. So not only are we ranking for local, we are also ranking for traditional search. When you search for Fort Bend Realtor, he's one of the people that you find. And then we've got Sugarland too. It's a little hard to target a county and a city at simultaneously on a local profile. It takes a lot of time and energy, but we're doing it. The big ones on here, the ones that we're really proud of is real estate agent, real estate agents locally. So if anybody was to do a hyperlocal search that said real estate agent or real estate agent near me, Brett is going to be top three. All right. He's also going to be, uh, he's going to be number 10, which is not ranking. That's not local search pack for Sugar Lane Realtor. This thing is, is that most of my clients are just using these five hacks. Separate themselves. There's nobody that's going to catch you. If you follow this advice, if you are able to do this on your own, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen it really fail. It doesn't really matter. You can be in a place that somebody has 3,000 reviews, they're a local broker that has a 20-year reputation, and all 3,000 of their reviews are five stars. And in my experience, we can still, we may not be number one, but we can probably beat anybody else on the page, and maybe even that guy too. That's how strong this collection of hacks is, is, is it overcomes like almost any visible advantage that other people have on you. Okay, so the five hacks, again, just last to summarize it, do video on YouTube, YouTube video, making sure that you use a device such as a handheld cell phone so that the metadata is still included in the video. Same thing, same recommendation with images, except now you're using the camera again off your cell phone. Same email account to open up or use as many of these tools as possible. Use a template that encourages deep keyword rich reviews. And if you can afford to, the last and final hack would be the potential to hire a professional marketing company like us. Now, these decisions are not for new agents, the hiring of a, of a professional marketing company. Uh, prices would generally range with us or anybody else somewhere, somewhere between like one to eight or 9,000 for a website. And then anywhere from uh, $500 to $5,000 per month on the service. And we fall somewhat in the middle of all that. So if you were going to look for a professional to just do this all, tell you what to do, Inbound REM could, could be a good partner for you. However, you don't need to do that. You would start off with these hacks. You want to get used to doing these things. Let's say you don't own a real estate website. Fine. Just get used to op uploading video and get used to using your phone. Images, same thing. Uh, Gmail account, reviews, get used to sending out reviews. If you were doing all four of these things, you're probably going to be generating a lot of business just off those strategies alone. So the hack would then be opening up a website that also, like the fifth and final piece, this, this one map piece, kind of makes the whole thing just add such an incredible amount of momentum and sizzle that it's really difficult to think of any way that anybody would ever beat you in hyperlocal given six months, six to 12 months to create some momentum. All right, that's it. I've been Robert Newman. If you want super, 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 super effective, important, relevant, and free hacks, subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up for this. Leave me a comment, um, uh, please. And you'll find my calendar link in the bottom of this, uh, this YouTube channel. And if for some reason you don't, you can go to inboundrem.com, go to the About or Services pages. In either one of those two places, you'll find a way to get in touch with me. I hope you found this useful. All right. Good luck.